Thank you, Larry. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my screen. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Is it okay? Yep. Yes, okay. I'll start. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm really glad to, to be there with you at the, at the workshop. Uh, I'm Alexandre, I'm working at Navia, and today I will talk to you about uh, 3D semantic segmentation. I will present you uh, a soon to be published uh, data set on semantic segmentation. And I will finish with Bayesian active learning uh, applied to data set distillation. Just a quick introduction uh, to Navia. Navia is a company um, that brings uh, autonomous driving technologies to, to vehicles to the market. Uh, it's a company um, created eight years ago, and uh, that was, was one of the first to sell autonomy, uh, autonomous vehicles to clients. Um, we are a team of 300 uh, people with half of engineering team, and uh, we are operating shuttles all around the world. So Navia is specialized into passenger transports. Uh, we have two, uh, two vehicles that can uh, transport around 15 people. And we are also specialized on goods transport uh, with a speci specialization into industrial, industrial sites or like airports, for example. Our ambition is to bring level four autonomy to all of our platforms. And for that, we need a machine learning team. And I'm, I'm very happy to, to present you uh, our team. I'm, uh, uh, I'm working with five great engineers and uh, lead by uh, Dr. Ravi Karan. We are mainly working on uh, person perception uh, tasks. Uh, both on cameras and LiDAR. And lately, uh, we work a lot on data set creation, both on images and on LiDAR. And today I will talk more about uh, N3DS, Navia 3D semantic segmentation data set that we created uh, last year. So to go more in details about uh, what we are doing, uh, we give you a, a short uh, video preview. On the, the top left, you can see our 2D object detector on images uh, with various cases, classic like traffic sign, cars, vehicles, but also intersection to, to get uh, priority uh, views. Uh, we are working also on monocular 3D detection. You can have a, a quick preview uh, on the, the bottom left. Uh, on, a, on a kitty example. And uh, to conclude with images on the, the bottom right, we have a multitask learning uh, with 2D object detection and ground segmentation uh, task. And on the top right, it's our label uh, data set and 3 ds uh, that you can uh, show with our a dedicated uh, map editor tool. So here I'm just a, a preview on our 3D perception, perception task stack. stack. Uh, we have the chance to have uh, many years of uh, autonomous driving vehicles operating around the world. And we created a, a large maps data bank uh, it allows us to be able to create create a data set like N3DS. Uh, we started first for, uh, with a map selection, then semantic labeling of those maps and a uh, data set split. We end up with a, a large data set 
uh, that we update with our active learning loop, which uh, takes advantage of our Maps Data Bank and our actual uh, data set. And to help us exploit uh, our data sets, we have uh, many tools to, uh, to be able to perform uh, deep learning training and monitoring. We are using tools uh, provided by weights and biases uh, to be able to, to have model registry, uh, efficient CI, and, uh, and training and monitoring. And all of this is to be able to, to, bring, to, to build a semantic segmentation block um, in the goal to improve our obstacle detection uh, brick. And uh, with the semantic segmentation, we are able to, to build a, a semantic occupancy map uh, that will help the obstacle detection uh, block. So now we, I will talk um, more in detail about uh, our data set for 3D semantic segmentation. So just a, a quick reminder about semantic segmentation. It's a quite simple task in appearance. Uh, it's to give a, a label to each LiDAR point in a, in a, in a LiDAR map. Uh, you go from the left with a, a raw LiDAR map uh, with intensity display, and then you want to, to have um, a nice map, nice map with a with a, a class uh, addressed to, to each point. Um, the main goal is to help uh, the obstacle detection block uh, on our autonomous uh, vehicles, but in uh, future works also for the localization work. Um, so one can ask why you need another data set, because uh, we have such great data set provided by uh, semantic kitty and you've seen or way more open data set. But for Navia, it's mandatory to have a commercially yeah. usable data set and we need a commercial license for, for that. So it was uh, simpler to develop our own data set. Um, also because Navia's operational domain is very diverse. We have shutters uh, all around the, the globe on different continents. Uh, we are operating in uh, suburban areas, uh, city center, industrial yeah. sites. So we need to have this diversity in our data set. And to be able to, to, to give a quick answers to our customers, we have developed five years ago, a mobile mapping system. So it's a quite simple you know, device in appearance. Uh, we have a 40 layer LiDAR, which, which is a, a quite low cost LiDAR compared to a 64 or 128 uh, layers LiDARs. We have a high grade uh, inertial navigation uh, system in it, which is uh, 100 times uh, more precise than the one in our vehicles. And we also have uh, two monocular cameras. So we can easily um, map every customer site uh, by putting our, our MMS on, on top of any uh, classic, uh, classic vehicle. So now I'll present you the N3DS uh, with a, a quick overview uh, on, on the right. Uh, you have two famous places of, of Paris. Uh, on the top, you have uh, Place de l'Etoile with the Arc de Triomphe in top view and the Eiffel Tower uh, on the right, on the, on the bottom. So N3DS is composed of 23 maps with uh, more than 1.5 billion points. Uh, with maps from nine countries, uh, 20 cities uh, from Asia, Europe, North America. And we have, uh, as I said before, a very diverse type of environment. It includes uh, peri-urban, urban areas, multi-lane roads, 
um, intense intersection and pedestrian in, tra in traffic. Um, about the label distribution, uh, we have a, a good inspiration from, from Semantic Kitty and, uh, and Nucine. We have uh, 31 labels, 26 static and uh, five dynamics. We have uh, obviously a, a, a big class imbalance as you have 20% uh, of the points which belongs to just the, the ground road and uh, near 30% in if you associate over uh, ground places. Compared to the public uh, known data sets, uh, in terms of size, uh, we, have, we are matching the size of uh, new SIM data sets. Uh, we are not, uh, we don't have instance and box uh, labeling for now, but it's, uh, it's coming uh, soon. And compared to Semanticity, we are not matching the, the number of points uh, yet, but we have the chance to have a high diversity in the, the cities map uh, for the data set. And to perform the, the labeling of, uh, of this data set, it was a huge work that uh, we made with uh, Talus International uh, company that you, you may know by uh, the name of Playment uh, in the past. Uh, it was a really great project to, uh, to, to work on uh, with Playment. Um, annotating uh, such a data set is not an easy task. Uh, it has a lot of work, uh, very good tools to be able to, to do that. Uh, you have to perform lots of review to be sure that uh, you have uh, the same definition of, uh, of objects in a data set. Uh, it's very interesting to, to be working on labeling because it allows you to, to know very well uh, your data and it's very important for, for the next steps in a, uh, in your machine learning job. Uh, so now that I've presented you NPDS, I will talk more about uh, how we uh, we use it. And first, I will talk about uh, data set split. Um, as you know, when you want to, to have a, a classic fully supervised uh, pipeline, you need to split your data set into three subsets. Uh, train validation and test. You are using train and validation um, in training loop to be able to, to train your model. And uh, once you are you're happy with your model, you want to, to benchmark it uh, on the test set. Um, to be noted that on a LiDAR data set like in 3DS, uh, you can choose to, to split uh, from different manner your, your data set. You can have different level of granularity. You can split it at a scan level uh, or you can do it at a map level. So we wanted to, to study this impact during split and we wanted to also test different methods uh, to, to split uh, the data set. Usually a random method uh, is, uh, is performed to, to avoid uh, too long work on, uh, on data set split. Uh, we wanted to, to test uh, another method introduced uh, in uh, 2011 uh, by uh, the paper of uh, Celisys on stratification multi-label data. The goal of stratified uh, label is to get in each of your subsets the same distribution of label that you have in your original data set. So we tested um, those two methods with different level of granularity and to be able to, to rank all uh, those methods and uh, the, their impact uh, on, uh, on later training, we use some metrics uh, like labels distribution, for example. And we also perform different uh, tests to, to, to judge if a split was, uh, was good or not. 
And um, on this topic, we choose to, to stay at sequence level uh, for, for the split uh, to keep consistency between uh, the inside a, a training subset. If you want to, to display a full map, uh, it's better to have uh, a fully labeled or completely raw map for that. And uh, stratify sampling uh, is performing better than uh, than random on that. Uh, so now uh, N3DS is a, a dataset specific for for semantic segmentation. Uh, we overview three different methods uh, on semantic segmentation. Uh, first, we we work on two uh, D based uh, methods like uh, squeeze seg v2 and salsa next. Uh, the goal is to represent the 3D point cloud as a 2D range image uh, made by uh, spherical projection. Um, it's an interesting method because you have uh, quite fast uh, training and you can easily uh, use architecture developed in, a, in a computer vision as you have a 2D, uh, 2D image and uh, the convolutional neural networks uh, uh, are working pretty well uh, on that. Uh, then you, we worked on uh, on the architecture of cylinder 3D, which takes advantage of the full 3D um, representation of the point cloud. Uh, it uses uh, sparse convolution uh, inspired from uh, the famous papers Secant and uh, Point Pillars, which are then used to to perform a 3D object detection. Uh, we benchmark those three methods on a, on a N3DS. Uh, it confirms the, the results given on other data sets like uh, semantic KT uh, and uh, Mucin. And we saw that uh, the mean IOU score and the IOU score for each class is way better on 3D representation uh, network like uh, Cinema 3D. But uh, about the, the inference time, uh, we can see that uh, Cinema 3D is way slower uh, than 2D, 2D based methods. And Salsa Next is quite a, a good model to have uh, decent performances and also a nice inference time. So here is a quick view about uh, the results of inference of our Cinder 3D implementation on one of our map in uh, Vincennes. Mm -hmm. um, we, for that, we made a, a label mapping uh, to, to be able to have a consistent uh, prediction on the most important classes that we wanted. Uh, we want um, a quite clean uh, ground segmentation, which is kind of useful for self-driving vehicles. Um, we want to, to have a, a nice segmentation about vegetation, which can be very problematic uh, on operation. Uh, it's a very sensitive topic for obstacle detection, as you cannot uh, manage perfectly vegetation over the the seasons and, and the weather. Um, so we are very happy for, with uh, the results uh, for now, and we are able to to uh, to use those results on production on our vehicles. Um, to help to help us to train uh, semantic segmentation models and be able to work uh, as a team and not as an uh, individual uh, uh, on, on each side. Uh, we are using uh, tools from rates and biases, which are very useful. It helps us to, to, to be able to monitor training. Uh, we can share reports easily, uh, doable uh, with the plots uh, given, given uh, by rates and biases. We have a model registry module, uh, so it's kind of very useful tool, and, and it's 
great deal. And uh, to finish, I will talk about active learning applied to 3D uh, semantic segmentation. So quick reminder about active learning. Uh, active learning uh, is, uh, is meant to, to select the most informative, informative samples uh, in the goal to lower annotation cost. In our case, uh, we want to do, do two things. We want to have a data set distillation meaning reduce the size of our data set uh, to, to have a, a quicker training, uh, training time, time. And uh, we want to be able to update our data, data set uh, with a nice sample selection. As the operational domain of uh, Navia is quite, it's quite diverse, if we want, for example, to uh, uh, to sell uh, shuttles in another country, uh, which is uh, we have a, a little domain gap with our original N3DS. We want to be able to annotate uh, the uh, a low amount of data. So active learning would be uh, very helpful here. So on the right, you have uh, one of our pipeline on active learning. Uh, shortly, it's a it's an iterative iterative process. Uh, first, you have a, a, a label pool. Uh, we are performing data augmentation on it. Uh, we are training this tiny uh, label pool, and we get a model. Uh, with this model, uh, we are able to to compute uh, uncertainty on unlabel pool, and with the, the a chosen method, we will uh, query samples in this unlabeled pool. Uh, those samples will be annotated and then added to the label pool. And you end the cycle when your budget is empty or if you have reached uh, sufficient performances with your model. So we have different uh, types of query uh, strategies. You have heard uncertainty sampling, diversity sampling, query by committee. And in our work, we focus uh, on uncertainty uh, sampling, which was uh, easier to, to implement uh, for, for production tests. So here you can have uh, some sampling examples uh, where we are able to, to record uh, unlabeled pool samples uh, with the uncertainty, uncertainty score. Uh, for each image, on top you have the prediction uh, and the center, the ground truth, and the uncertainty score uh, on, the, on the bottom. So our goal is to select the samples with high uncertainty. So you will choose uh, in priority samples from, from the right. Um, our work on active uh, learning uh, was published earlier this this year on a VISAP conference. We wanted to show the impact of data augmentation on uh, Bayesian active learning applied to semantic segmentation. Active learning is a quite uh, non-topic, but uh, not so much applied to 3D deep learning. And uh, we investigated uh, uh, in this direction. And we, we were able to demonstrate that on a one quarter of semantic kitty, uh, we are able to only have 60% of uh, this data set to reach the baseline uh, mean IOU score. So that augmentation, uh, it's a non-technique for regularization. And uh, we wanted to to use it to robust sample, uh, robustify sample selection, and to have a better heuristic function stability. Um, we use the Albumentations library uh, to to get some uh, some nice uh, and and simple uh, data augmentation. But we also use some of our uh, custom custom made uh, data augmentation. Uh, like instance cut mix that you can see on, on the top image. 
uh, for each image, you have uh, the original ground truth uh, on the top, the augmented sample in the center, and the difference between the, the, the two uh, at the bottom. And to quickly uh, code our, to have a code base on Bayesian active learning, we use the BAL library, which is available on GitHub, and which is a very good uh, source for, for us. Uh, so to conclude, uh, we wanted to, to test our, our research work on semanticity to N3DS. And we were able to, to see that uh, on SqueezeSeg uh, V2, on the entire data set, to reach baseline, uh, we only need 80% of our data set. Uh, but if you are OK with uh, reducing uh, your baseline score, uh, of two points, uh, you can use only 50% uh, of your of the, of the data set, for example. And on SASA next, uh, we have the confirmation of 60% of uh, of samples on, of the entire data set to reach the baseline. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope you learn a, a lot of things. I would be happy to answer your question. Thank you. In the interest of time, maybe just one short question. There are any questions? Yes. Uh, so the question was, when is the release date and have you already released the data set? <laughs> Uh, no release date uh, for now. We are working on it. I hope we will be able to uh, to publish it uh, before the, the end of, of the year. Uh, we will also uh, certainly provide a dev kit to be able to easily use uh, the data set and the split module. So we will keep you posted uh, when it's going to be uh, published. Let's speak again.